Okay, so we are looking at exam one in class review, and we are going to look at several different types of problems. We're going to begin with continuing the pattern for five more items in the list. So when we're looking at this, we're looking at whether or not it's addition or subtraction. It could be multiplication or division. But we look at the comparison of the two numbers. And this, we are going to do a subtraction for our numbers to see what, whether the number is positive or negative. And we're going to take the second one and we're going to subtract the first one. So we are looking at exam one, or question one, part A, and our numbers are 111 and 120. And the reason we want to take the second one and subtract the first one and see if it finds our um, pattern is because we want to know if it's a positive or negative. And from this to this, we want to know if it's increasing or decreasing. So we really want to take the second term and subtract the first term. And when we do that, we will get negative 9. Now we can check that to see if it's true. So if we've got 111 minus 9, that would get us 102. 102 minus 9 would be 93. 93 minus 9 would be 84. So that makes sense. Now we needed to find the next five items in the list. So we're starting from 84. Well, we can take 84 minus 9 gets us 75. And then 75 minus 9 would get us 66. And then 66 minus 9 would get us 57. 57 minus 9 would get us 48. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. We need one more. And 48 minus 9 would get us 39. So the next five terms then would be 75, 66, 57, 48, and 39. So those are the answer you're actually looking for. All right, let's look at the second one. Let's look at B. If we're looking at part B, then we are looking at 7, 15, 23, 31, and 39. So again, we're going to take 15 and let's subtract 7 and see what we get. So 15 minus 7 will get us 8, and that's a positive 8. So that means 7 plus 8 gets us 15. 15 plus 8, well, that's 23. 23 plus 8 is 31. 31 plus 8 is 39. Now we need to find the next five terms. So 39 plus 8 will get us 47. 47 plus 8 will get us 55. 55 plus 8 will get us 63. 63 plus 8 will get us 71. 71 plus 8 will get us 79. So our terms are going to be 47, 55, 63, 71, and 79. All right. So our next question says to solve the problem by guessing and adjusting and show work. In a racing baking competition, Annie, Shelley, and Jenny made a total of 83 cookies. If Annie baked two more than Shelley and 11 more than Jenny, how many cookies did Annie bake? So this is question two. So we've got Annie, we've got Shelley, and we have Jenny. And we know that the total cookies that they made were 83. It told us that altogether they're going to make 83 cookies. So if we're looking at a total of 83, we need to pick, if we're looking for how many did Annie make, so we can start with Annie, we can give her a number and then see how that works out. So Annie baked two more than Shelly and 11 more than Jenny. So if we look at 83, if we divide it by 3, we're almost to 30. We're going to start with that because 30 times 3 would be 90. I just want a starting point. Now, Annie made 2 more than Shelly, so that means Shelly was 28 because 28 plus 2 would get us 30. And it said that Shelly and 11 more than Jenny. So 
two, she made two more than Shelly and 11 more than Jenny. So if I subtract 11 from 30, I get 19. If I add those together, I end up with 77. Well, the difference between 77 and 83 is six. So that means I have three people, I have six cookies that are unaccounted for. So if I add two to each one, let's see what that does. So 32, 30, and 21. So she's, Annie has still made two more than Shelly and 11 more than Jenny. If I add these together, I get 62 and 83. So that's the number I'm looking for. The question is, how many did Annie bake? Annie made 32. All right, next question. So, decide whether the argument is an example of inductive or deductive reasoning. All U.S. presidents have come from the original 48 con connected states. No person from Alaska can be president. Well, for this, let's look at what we're looking at here. All U.S. presidents have come from the original 48 connected states, so no person from Alaska can be president. We're now asking if this is true or false. We're asking what kind of reasoning was used. So there's an observation that's made here that all the presidents have come from the 48 connected states. So through that observation, they're getting a theory that that no person in Alaska can be president. So we are looking, this is part A, we're doing an observation of who has been president in regard to the states, and we're taking it to a theory. So that means we are inducing something. We are having induction. This is induction. We can also look at that we're looking from a specific to a general or an observation to a theory. All right, let's look at part B. Ricky estimates that his homework will take two hours to complete and should be able to attend the seven o'clock movie. So now he's making a theory and he's trying to confirm it. So Ricky estimates that his homework will take two hours. He's theorizing that he can get the homework done in two hours and that way he can attend the movie. So he's making a theory and then he's trying to take it to a confirmation. So he's starting with a theory. His theory is that he can complete that homework. There's no guarantee that he can, but he's got a theory. So he's taking a theory and then he's gonna try and confirm that. We can also look at that he's looking at general. In general, he's going to complete his homework in two hours. So he specifically can go to the movies. So this will be deduction. All right, next question is illustrating Goldbach's conjecture for the following number. So with Goldbach's conjecture, we just need to find two prime numbers that add together to be 40. So this will be number four for part A, we've got 40. So we just need two prime numbers. Remember, one is not a prime, uh, two and 38. 38 is not a prime. If we take three, 3 plus 37, because I can take 40 minus 3 plus 37. 3 and 37 are both primes, so that works. Another example would be 11 plus 29 and 17 plus 23. So you're looking for prime numbers. You've got to know which ones are prime and which one are composite. Remember, a prime number is a number that only is divisible by one and itself. All right, let's look at the next number. The next number is 32. If I subtract two from that, I get two plus 30. Well, 30 is not a prime number, so I can't do that. If I subtract three, I get 29. So three plus 29 is 32. Those are both prime numbers. Another example would be 13 plus 19. And there can be multiple answers. I'm only looking for one on your exam, but you're just looking to find two prime numbers. All righty, next question, number five. We have to decide whether the sets are equivalent, equal, or neither. So, equivalent, remember, has the same number of elements in each set. Equal means it's the 
same elements, and neither, of course, would be neither. So if we're looking at day, or D is a day of the week, and G is a month in the year. Well, days of the week and months in the year are not the same. It's not the same number of elements because this would have seven and this would have 12. They are not equal. They are not equivalent. This one will be neither. So number 5A will be neither. On part B, we have a cat, a dog, a goat, a pig, a hamster, a couch, a chair, a table, a desk, a bed. Well, they're not the same. They're not equal to each other because they're not the same element. However, one, two, three, four, five elements, one, two, three, four, five elements. This makes them equivalent. They are equivalent because they have the same number of elements in each set. So the same number of elements in each set. All right, if we look at the next one, we have cookie, pie, cake, and pudding. And we have why is a dessert? Well, all of those are desserts, so they are equi uh, equal sets. They have the same elements in them. They don't have the same number, but they are the same elements. So that makes them equal. Because they have the same elements in each set. All right, let's look at number six. We're looking to see if it is a well-defined set. So if we look at whether or not it's well-defined, we are looking at, focus that up just a little bit. It's a little blurry. We are looking to see if they're well-defined. Does it make sense? So X is a building over 30 feet high. Well, I can define what a 30 foot high building is by measuring it, and I can say, well, that building is over 30 feet high. So this one is well-defined. X is big, so this is the set such that X is big. Well, what is big? Big is, depends on your opinion. It's an opinion based. So because it's an opinion, it's not exact. This one kind of vague, what does it mean? So this one is well-defined. This one is not well-defined because my opinion of big might not be the same as your opinion of big. So it, if it doesn't give an exact, like everybody's gonna agree what 30 feet high is. Not everybody is going to agree um, whether or not it's big. So, well-defined, not well-defined. Let me write that out for you. So, A is well-defined, and B is not well-defined. All right, number seven. Use the Venn diagram to determine the number of elements described in the described region. So we are looking at N of A intersect B intersect C. So we're looking for the number of elements. That's what N is, the number of elements in there. What is it? Well, R, or we're looking what is actually in there. So the, the value for that is going to be three. That is our intersection, so N of, so let's see, this will be part seven. And we're looking at the N of A intersect B intersect C is going to be three. Alrighty, now we're looking at N and we're looking at the union between C and B and the union of A and B, and then we're going to subtract them. So we're looking at C union B and A union B. So let's go find those values first. So for C union B, that means we're taking all of C and union it with all of B and not repeating. So if we take that, we're gonna have 12 
plus we'll have 6 plus 3 plus 8. So we have all of the parts of C, and then we're going to union that with B, but we don't want to repeat. So then it'll be plus 9 plus 2. So all of B and all of C. And when we add those, we're going to get 40. And now we need to find A union with B. So in A, we have 4 and 2 and 6 and 3. And then we've got to go find the other two values with C. We're going to have, oops, sorry, with B. Let's see. Uh, yeah, with B. So then we're going to have 9 and 8. So that is going to total up to be 32. So when we're looking at the number of C union B minus A union B, we're going to have C union B is 40 minus A union B is 32, and so that's going to get us 8. All right, now our last part, part C, is the number of elements in A. So in A, we are going to add those up. 4 plus 6 plus 3 plus 2. So that's 10, and 3 plus 2 is 15. All right, let's look at number 8. So for number 8, we need to shade the Venn diagram to represent the set. A union B, A intersect B, and so forth. So if we're looking at shading it, so this is 8, part A. We're looking at A union B. So we're looking at a and B, and we have our a universal set that's going on around it. So we'll draw our box. So this is a union, that means all of set A, all of set B. So we're gonna color in all of that. That's what A union B would look like. All right, our next one is gonna be A intersect B. So that means we still have two circles with set A and set B. And the intersection is what they have in common, like when you're looking at an intersection of two streets. What do they have in common? Remember with the union, it looks like a U. It's not really. It's just the subset uh, notations that we're using there. But you could fit all of A and all of B inside of like that, that cup, that dish. I can put all of A and all of B in there. When I look at the intersection, it almost looks like an N. It's not, but it almost looks like it. So you could think about that being intersection. And you can also think when I intersect something, I'm not gonna have as many parts. And so I can only put a few on this or they're going to topple over. So that might be way, one way to keep it straight. All right, part C, we're looking at A intersect B union with A union B complement. So when we're looking at that, we are looking um, again at our set with A and B inside our universal set or our box. So A intersect B, we already know what that looks like, so that's going to be right there. A union B complement, the complement is everything outside of what they've given you. So if it's A union B, this was A union B, the complement will be everything on the outside. So our complement is going to be everything on the outside. Everything out here. So it's going to be all of this and all of that. That would be what it would look like. All right, and then part D we have A complement unioned with B complement. Let's draw our two sets again. So we have A and we have B. So A complement is everything outside of A. 
So everything outside of A would be all of this. Everything outside of A. B complement would be everything outside of B. So that's going to be all of this. Everything outside the circle of B. So the only thing not shaded is where they overlapped. So this would be the only not shaded part. The rest of it will be shaded. All right, number nine. For number nine, for the set A, B, C, D, list all of the two element subsets. So we're looking for subsets that have two elements. So for set nine, or for problem nine, we have the set A, B, C, and D. And we want to list all of the two element subsets. So with that, we're looking for subsets that have two elements. So A comma B and A comma C and A comma D. Now we'll go to the next letter. So B comma C, B comma D, and then C comma D. We are not repeating any of our sets. So if you go in a methodical way, you won't have to wonder if you've gotten them all. All right, that was part A. Part B said to list all of the subsets. So one of the first things we need to remember is that the empty set is a subset of all sets. So we have the empty set. Let's list all of the single sets. So A, B, C, and D. Now we know all of the twos, so let's go ahead and list those. So A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, and C, D. Now we need to do the sets that have three. So we can start with A, B, C, and A, B, D. And then we can do A, C, D, and we can do B, C, D. So again, I'm trying to go in order. So I did the A, B, C, A, B, D. Then A, C, D, and I've done all the A's, so then I go to the B. And then there's the other set would be the complete set that we started with. So our next set would be A, B, C, and D. All right, the next question we have, this will be question number 10. We are given some sets and we need to find some information on those sets. I'm going to fold that there. So we are given some sets here, and we're going to find some values. So we need to find A minus B. So we're looking at set A, and we need to subtract out set B. So that means we're looking at set A, and whatever's left over is what we'll have. So the R will cancel, the S cancels, the W cancels, this Z over here doesn't matter because we're looking at set A and just taking out set B. So what's left, if we take out the R, the S, we're left with T, and we're left with Y. All right, the next one is C minus B. So now we're taking set C, and we're going to subtract out set B. So the S is in set B, so we subtract it. The W is there, but not X, not Y, but Z is. So this will leave us with the set X and Y. We do not care what's in B. We care what's in the starting set, take out anything they have in common, and that's what you have left. But we don't worry if it was in B and not in the other one. And now we're looking at A complement. So for A complement, we're going to look at set A, 
and the universal set because the complement again is everything outside of this set. So we don't have Q. We do have R, we have S, we have T, we don't have U, we don't have V, but we have a W, we don't have X, we do have Y, and then we don't have Z. So that would be the A complement. All right, our next question is given the number of elements in set A, how many subsets does A have? All right, so number 11, we have, we are told it's seven. Remember when you're doing this, it is two to the K power for the number of elements in set A. How many subsets does it have? It's two to the K. That seven is your K, so this will be two to the seven, which is 128. That's for part A. For part B, we would have 2 to the 8th, which is going to be 256. All right, last question is number 12. So in number 12, there are 95 students who have applied for a scholarship. They've told us what they are, how many applicants are neither an athlete nor a minority. So we are going to draw a Venn diagram to represent this to figure out who has what. So we're going to have two circles. We're looking at minorities and athletes. All right, so minorities and athletes. So it says there are 18 minorities, seven of whom are athletes. That means seven of our minorities are athletes. That means that's where they overlap. There is seven that overlaps between them. Now, we have 18 total minorities. If seven of them are athletes, 18 minus seven, would get us 11. That gets us a total of 18 minorities. It said that 20 athletes applied. So that means there's 20 total athletes, seven of them were minorities, 13 of them were not. How many applicants are neither an athlete nor minority? How do we figure that out? Well, we know that there were 95 total students who applied for the scholarship. So if we look at 95, and then we're going to subtract out the students that we know about. So we have 11, 7, and 13. Well, that gets us 95 minus 31, which will get us 64. So that tells us there are 64 students who applied for the scholarship, and that 64 would be out here because it would be on the outside of them, that were not a minority and not an athlete.